Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on Power Pivot. This is Trisha Chatyani and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how Power Pivot can re reduce the huge Excel file size that is available on our system. In my previous tutorials, I kept talking about how Power Pivot can make your file size smaller and hence making the calculations faster. In this tutorial, I will show you how does that work. Additionally, I will also show you how you can use the Power Pivot window to import data into the Excel. Let's see how does that work in the first place. If you look at my Power Pivot or sorry, the, the example sheet here, I have the database 7 that is mentioned here. This file has about 2,90,000 data which is available on this Excel sheet and if you look at the size of this file we can go back onto my Windows Explorer the file size is about 14 Mbps. Now if I'm looking at this file size that's a huge file size if I want to transfer it it will be a little difficult for me to do that plus if I add a pivot table to this file or do some calculations this file size will increase further and hence making it difficult for me to navigate or make any calculations in this file. For this, our Power Pivot comes to our rescue where you can use the Power Pivot window to import the file and make it smaller. And then if you do more calculations, your file size is much smaller than what you already have it with you. What I'm going to do right now is, I am going to close this file which I have here. I'm just saving it to ensure everything is there. Once I close it, I'm going to open a new Excel spreadsheet. Which is a blank workbook. On my Excel workbook, what I'm going to do right now is I will go on to the Power Pivot tab, which you already know how you can add the Power Pivot tab onto the ribbon. So I'm not going to get deep into that. Let's begin and see how when you go into the Power Pivot window, what happens? I'm going to move and show you how does that work. I click on the Power Pivot here on the top. And from here, I'm going to click on the Manage screen. It will open up my Power Pivot window. So if the first time if you're opening it, it takes a little longer, which is fine. You can see that the Power Pivot window is open now. In this window, I will click on From Other Resources. You had already seen there is From Database, From Data Services, From Existing Connections. I'm going to click on, which is under Get External Data Group. So I'm going to click on From Other Sources. In From Other Sources, I will just go to the end to find excel which is your the excel file click on excel file and then click on next so i'm saying that click select from the excel file and in the file excel path i'm going to click on browse and browse through the place where my file is available so your my file is saved i'm going to go on to database 7 and click on open it will automatically pick the name of the file also in this list. Click on next. Okay, when I click on next, you can see that it automatically opens the table import wizard in this wizard. The database file is automatically being added. Now, if I want to check how does my file look, I can click on preview and filter. Now, this preview and filter is very, very useful when you do not want your full data to be shown here. You either want the data to be filtered and then imported that can also be done from this preview and filter option. I'm going to click on this preview and filter option to ensure that my data is shown in the way I want it to be seen or imported. So once I click on the preview and filter, it will load the data and show me all the databases. Now, there is a little bit of a problem here where you can see that the headers are not properly picked up. Why? Because I did not select 
whether I want what I want it as a header. So I'll just go back and see what I have missed. You can see that there is an option here. Say use first row as a column header. I already have a header in my data, and hence I will click on this. Just like we have that insert table, and where we click on the the checkbox where it says I have my table has header. The similar thing happens here, where I would say use first row as a column header, and I'll click on next. Now, when I go back and check on the preview and filter, it would have automatically picked up the header on this window. So it's going to load. Here you can see now the headers are showing correctly on each of the data. So preview can be very, very useful if you ever miss any of these things. You can also, like I mentioned, you can always go on to filter the data that you want. Let's say you only want the data for men. Oh, sorry, for home or for accessories, you can always do that. You can pick up whatever you need from this list. You can filter it out and then click OK to check if everything is OK. I think everything looks fine for me. So I'm just going to click on Finish. Once I click on Finish, it takes me back to the Table Import Wizard where it automatically picks up the data that I have just tried importing. And now it shows success. You can see that there is no errors which are showing on the right. We had seen in the previous tutorials how you can actually use your Power Query to import the data, which was a very simple method. But you can see that Power Pivot can also be the similar kind of information here. Also, you can see it says to like 89,700 rows transferred. That means this is the number of rows that it is going to get imported from the database, which we remember it was about close to 2,90,000 rows. So this can also be very, very useful for you to know if there is any issues. If there is any error or any issues, it will automatically pick up your saying that there is an error. Once this is done, I'm going to close this. It has now been imported onto your Power Pivot window. And you know what you do with the Power Pivot window. You can do a lot of calculations, a lot of information that you can add using the Power Pivot window. It is very, very simple. So what we are going to now do is just go back to Excel. For going back to Excel, I'm going to click on this icon that you can see on the top. Click on that icon. It takes me to Excel. And from here, I'm going to save this file, saying Save As. And I'm going to save it in the same folder so that we know what it is showing up as. So I'm going to call it as normalizing data. What I'm doing is I'm normalizing the data wherein I'm reducing the file size so that it is it is going to work with my Power Pivot very easily or with my file very easily. So I'm calling it normalizing data with database 7. I'm going to give the same name. What is normalizing data? Normalizing data is where you keep your data perfectly user usable for your next uh, steps. So what you're doing is right now you're getting it onto the Power Pivot so that when you're working on the Power Pivot, it is easier for you to work on that particular file. And that's the reason we call it normalizing the data. You can see that it is now saved. Now let me go back and check on my the win, window explorer. You here you go. That are you can see that your 14 MB file, which we had, has been reduced to 890 KB, which is not even one MB. Isn't this amazing? So what now you can do is, of course, you can't see that data there. That is what your worry must be. But if you look at my previous tutorials, you know what all you can do with your data from the Power Pivot window itself. Here you can create your measures. Here you can add columns and continue with such information that you want to keep adding onto the database. You can do more database that you want to add from the other database, add from the Excel file. And then you can perform the uh, the different related uh, function that we had seen for the VLOOKUP, which is the uh, which is the replacement to VLOOKUP, which is a VLOOKUP in Excel related function is 
in Power Pivot. So to perform that kind of functions or the DAX functions in, X, in the Power Pivot, you can use this database, which is already available in the Power Pivot window and continue by using your pivot table from this data. And once you create your pivot table, I'm just going to say existing worksheet because there is nothing on my worksheet. I will create a power pivot, sorry, pivot table from here. And here you can see all the databases automatically been picked up. And I can start creating my pivot table from this list. I'm just going to pick a couple of things so that we see what the size that goes up to. We can do the same if you want to. You can check on your file for, I'm just going to take one. Here it is automatically, we know about the pivot table, so I'm not going to get deep into that. I'm going to remove the month and the quarter. I just want year and the months. I'm just going to keep year and the month. So here it's on. I'm going to take the month as well. Yeah. So here you can see it is with the year and the month. I got the data in the pivot table. Even if I say this now, of course, you can't see the data, but it is there working on the back end. And here you can only see the pivot table. Even after creating the pivot table, look at the file. It's still not going up to even, it's, it's just one Mbps, which is, it's so amazing that you can actually use the 14 Mbps file and reduce it to just show it in one Mbps and Make your file so small that when you now work on this file, it will be very, very easy to run this file. Also, like I mentioned, you're not even doing any calculations on your Excel sheet. You are not able to. The only drawback here is you cannot use your Excel functions, but you know that there are DAX functions which can be used in the Power Pivot to work on your data. So not necessary, not required. You, you are not required to have this data in the Excel sheet. Hope you found this tutorial useful and you're going to use it for all your databases that you have. Keep watching for more of such tutorials on measures and DAX functions and useful, uh, useful methods to make your file more efficient and your dashboards efficient. Thank you.